Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. I wanted to go over the anatomy of an underground plastic tank installation. Uh, this is, of course, mid-process. We have our pipe penetrations uh, going through the tank at this point. First of all, for all the penetrations, you'll see a couple here. We're using our tank penetration gaskets. This is a very effective way to move the to move pipe through the tank, the wall of, the, of a plastic tank. Now it doesn't work on concrete, just for plastic. As you push that pipe through, it flares out the backside of that gasket to create a nice watertight seal. Very easy to use, much more easy than um, the traditional bulkhead fittings, which require someone on the inside of the tank and someone on the outside of the tank to tighten the, the nut against the gland. Um, so here we have our inlet side. This is going to be the pipe that receives the drainage. And in this case, we're draining a high tunnel system for agricultural application. So we have our four inch inlet and we have uh, on the other side of the tank, we have an overflow, same, same size pipe, four inch. In this case, we're using solid core schedule 40, four inch uh, pipe. Um, that's a good, uh, good conductor pipe um, for especially for drinking water systems. Next we have a one inch PVC, again schedule 40, coming out of the tank here. This is for our supply line coming out of the pump that's going to feed, in this case, a frost-free yard hydrant. Now we use rigid pipe going through the tank wall. You want to make sure to use PVC, not CPVC, not PEX, not copper. You want to use Schedule 40 PVC. Um, that's going to be iron pipe size, which is rated, which is what you need for these gaskets. So we're using a nice solid piece of four inch or uh, one inch PVC, and then we're going to adapt it. We're going to glue on our our uh, one inch barbed adapter. Then we can run a flexible one inch uh, poly pipe off of this off of this supply line that will go ultimately to the hydrant. Up here, we have a two inch pipe. This is our vent for the cistern. This is what will allow air to escape the tank um, as it fills. Uh, you you wanna make sure to have a vent in your, in your system. Now, we barely push this pipe into the tank. It's only in about three inches. And the reason for that is we don't want the, this pipe in underneath the maximum fill level of the cistern because we always want that always want it above the max fill level so that air can escape through the vent we generally leave it high until we're finished backfilling and then we'll cut it to just above grade and put in our two inch tank vent uh, it's a poly vent mosquito proof available on our website and that will just thread into a two inch female adapter which will then um, glue into the two inch pipe to create our vent. Finally have our riser for the, for the cistern. This is a, in this case, a 15 inch manhole extension. And we're just extending the, um, the lid, the access in the side of the tank that's directly over our pump. That way we have quick access if we ever need to service that pump uh, to maintain it or to replace it. The riser is over that over that pump location. On the other side, we're going to leave that lid on the tank and it is siliconed down. We, we remove the lid, apply a bead of silicone, and then refasten the lid. Even though that lid has a gasket, we always like to use silicone just as a, as a secondary uh, measure to protect um, the tank from getting groundwater in, inside. So that lid will remain underground. It will be buried but this, this side over here will be extend above, above grade. In most applications, we recommend this riser be anywhere from three to eight inches above grade. In this application, this is, there's going to be another high tunnel over this, so that, that extension above grade is not necessary because it, it will be sheltered. But generally speaking, you want this riser to be a few inches above grade to keep out any potential groundwater accumulation and to protect the quality of the water inside the tank.